Well, glory. I'll tell you what. How many have learned to trust through it all? If you have your Bibles this morning, I want to invite you to turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter number 14. Everybody take it easy. I promise I won't preach over two hours. We have microwaves to warm the food with. Everybody okay with that? I've just lost some of you. All right, well, that's okay. Matthew chapter number 14. I want to I wanna just share a little bit um, about personal feelings. Um, I think how many of us think. You know, we, we, we talk all the time about different types of people in this world, and there are some that are very confident and very sure of their self. But I think there's probably a few more of us that sometimes wonder, who are we? Why would God want to use me? And in the message, the point I hope to make is it's not about who we are, or whether we have little or whether we have much. It's about bringing it to Jesus and saying, here it is, Lord. Use it. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that we, are, we serve a God who is able to take little and make much out of it. I stand amazed this week, and, you know, there's very little. Um, I can cut meat. I can sell meat. I can give people a hard time. But when it comes to the construction in the things, I sit back in amazement. You saw on the video that was shown, these men have come in and they've taken a cement slab. And following the blueprints, they have put up the interior walls. And something that, I, if it's on the video, I missed it. They are much farther than what that video showed. And it's people who have come together and are working one with another and doing what needs to be done to accomplish, to accomplish a common goal. And a person like me stands back and look at that, and I'm just in amazement. And I appreciate everything that these men are doing, but I know that God's the one that's with them. And he's working through these men not only to bless us here, but the years in the past. And if God allows, I'm sure, years into the future. So what, I'm talk what I want to talk about and to our church here is understanding that we do have something to offer. Regardless of how we feel about it or how we feel about ourselves, we have something that we can offer. And as you look at this passage of Scripture, let me, just, let me just set the context of what's going on here. In John chapter number 14, Jesus Christ has just found out that his cousin, John the Baptist, had been beheaded. When he heard the news and, and, and he realized that John was now dead, I believe not only did it, did it devastate him because of his love for John, but I also believe, and for you carpenters of Christ, I have something I call smithology, all right? So let me explain to you what it is. It's my opinion, and that's all it is. But I tend to believe that when, G when John was beheaded and Jesus Christ received the message, I believe in his mind not only did his heart go out to John, but I believe it also brought to his remembrance or his mind what was about to happen to him in, in the not-too-distant future. And I believe as he's going through this and as he's, we, we know he's come to the place in his life now where he's gone around and he's preached the kingdom and he's healed people and restored sight to the blind and all these other things. And, and everywhere he goes, people are pressing on him. I, 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 feel, I feel, Bob, you're kind of like that now. He's out here at the, the job site and we're all saying, what next, what next, what next, you know? But Jesus is there and people are pressing on, but he always had time to deal with those and when we look at, the, at verse number 13, which is where I would like to pick up there in Matthew chapter 14, verse 13, 
It says, when Jesus heard it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. Now here's the thing. Jesus is trying to get away with his disciples. He's trying to get away, have a little private time and encourage them and pray with them and love them and and continue to train them for what's coming in the near future. And as his goal is to get away, the people look out and could see where he was going and they, they began to follow after him. And when Jesus gets out of the ship, there is this vast multitude that is standing. You follow on there in verse number 15. When it was evening, his disciples came excuse me verse 14 and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick if you go over to Mark it says not only did he heal their sick but he also taught them Luke Luke instructs us that he that he taught them in regards to the kingdom Jesus spent a day with these individuals sharing the love of God and the mercy of God and and hope with them because these individuals were in drastic need and Jesus was there tired as he was With all the things going on around about him, what had just happened to John, all these things there, when he looked out and he looked at the the crowd that was there that day, the word that stands out was he had compassion on them. Would to God we could see through those eyes a little better than we do sometimes. Would to God, as we're going through our life and things are swirling around and pressing around about us, would to God we had the ability to look at someone and look beyond our circumstances and see the needs in their life and reach out to them with love and compassion just as Jesus did and try to make a difference in their life. When you look at that next verse in, number, in verse 15, after Jesus spent the afternoon with them and taught them and healed them and gave them hope, The disciples came to him in verse 15 and says, When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place. The time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give you them to eat. And I've thought about that an awful lot. Sometimes our compassion is, well, let's let, send them away and we'll let somebody else take care of them. Jesus' statement here is they don't need to leave. You guys give them something to eat. And I understand that as Jesus is talking, he knows exactly what's going to happen. He is going to, he is going to use the, the disciples to uh, accomplish this great miracle and his divinity is going to be declared. I get all that. But God is speaking to the disciples and says, and and encouraging them to be a part of the solution. They don't need to go away. You give them to eat. Now, I want you to notice verse number 17. This is kind of where, where where I'm kind of focusing my attention today. Their statement was, when Jesus said they need not depart, give them to eat. The statement that they make, they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. If you go over to the gospel accounts, they also add five loaves and two fishes, but what are they among so many? Here's what I want you to understand. Sometimes I can place myself in that thought process. God, I got five loaves and two fishes. I don't have the experience. I don't have the the understanding that a lot of people do in this situation or that situation. I've got five loaves and two fishes, and sometimes I can find myself saying, but what is that among so many? What can five loaves and two fishes can do? Well, we know from the end of the story that it can do a great deal when God is involved in it. And the point I want to make is rather than limit ourselves, and keep us from being able to allow God to use us. Rather than saying, God, I can't do that, we need to come to a place in our life where we acknowledge that in ourselves we can't do it, but with His help we can do all things through Christ. When I look at this passage of Scripture, the disciples said, five loaves and two fishes. Man, Lord, there's 5,000 men plus women and children out here. How in the world is that going to take care of them? And the key here is not the five loaves and the two fishes. The key here in John chapter number 6, the little boy that says, here's my lunch, Lord, use it. They brought that lunch to the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus said, make him sit down and watch what your God can do. 
I think about our building that's going up right now. For 18 years, and, yet, and I've not been a part of all that. For 18 years, there has been the dream. There has been the planning and the preparation and the getting ready. And in just the last few short days, we have seen what our God can do. And I want you to know this morning, He's not done yet. There's some great things that are going to happen. I don't know exactly how much more is going to be accomplished by Thursday, but here's what I can tell you. He does. And here's what I can tell you. If we come to Him and we give Him what little we have and say, God, take it and use it, we'll see just how great of things our God can do. Five loaves, two fishes. What is that amongst the multitude? Notice in that next verse, he said to them in verse number 18, bring them hither to me. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, took the five loaves, the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break, gave the loaves to his disciples and his disciples to the multitude. And notice verse 20, they did all and were filled, and they took up the fragments that remained, 12 baskets full. Now, I could give you some Smithology on that, too, but I'm going to pass on that for right now. But here's what I'm telling you. It's not about what you have to offer. It's not about what I have to offer. It's about our willingness to bring it to Jesus and say, here it is, Lord. And what I can tell you, we serve a God that can take the little that we have and he can use it any way he chooses to use it. Five loaves, two fishes, and I like to, I like to say that this was that, ver that day's version of the Lunchable. You know what I mean? This little boy had a snack lunch. Those, were pro those loaves were probably more like little rolls. The fish was probably either pickled or dried, but it was enough to sustain this little boy for his lunch. And Jesus Christ took a lunch and fed 5,000 men plus women and children. And the key, the difference, the reason he was able to do that was because of the willingness to bring it. I understand we're not all called to the same place of service. We're all called to service. We're all enlisted in the service of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But God has different plans for each and every one of us. There's different things that He wants to accomplish. There's, certain, there's different plans that He has for our life. And whether it's being called to preach the gospel, whether it's being a carpenter for Christ, whether it's being a music director or a missionary on a foreign field, the important thing is, is that whatever God's call in our life is, we bring what little we have and say, God, bless it and use it. And when He does that, great things can take place. Great things can be accomplished. Why God ever chose to call me into the ministry, I have no idea. I've told the church before, carpenters, I'll tell you as well, that's the first mistake he ever made. I'm pretty comfortable being by myself. Anybody else like that here besides me? I like my own company. Sometimes I argue with myself, but that's okay. Why God would ever call me in the ministry, but what I can tell you is when he's got a job for you, you can run, but you can't hide. Whatever our feelings about our abilities, folks, it's not us. It's not what I can do for him. It's what he can do through me that really makes a difference. And I want you to know today that what little we might have, what little we feel like we have, God is one, wanting to take that just as he did the five loaves and the two fishes. He's wanting to bless that and he's wanting to use that to glorify himself. And the question is, are we going to bring it to him? 
And will we allow him to use us as he sees fit? I ask you to stand, if you would, please, with heads bowed and eyes closed.